The master document contains other related documents called subdocuments. And why would you want that? Well, say you have a bunch of coworkers working on five different documents, and you have to go out and check up on each of their documents. If they're scattered on your computer or throughout the network, you have to go out each time to work with it. Better yet, search for it once and provide a link to it, so you can just open up the master document here, and when you need to check on those documents, since you already have a link to it, click on it and it'll take you right to it. Another benefit is, not only does it insert the link, but that link is also expandable. And when you expand it, it'll display all the text that's contained within those documents, and any changes you make in the expanded link will automatically update the documents it's linked to, or known as the subdocuments. Which is pretty cool because if I have any changes or comments I'd like to add, I don't have to open up their document, I can make all the changes within the master. That's why it's called the master. Because you can manage many other documents all within one. And you can also print multiple documents without opening up each one separately. So to go ahead and create your master document, well, I'm going to use my blank document as the master, so I just need to save it. Come up here, click Save. It'll do a Save As, since it's the first time I'm saving it. And on my desktop, you can see I've got my sub-documents that I want to insert into the master here after I saved it. And I conveniently called them Sub-Document 1, Sub-Document 2. I know it's very generic, but you can call it whatever you want. In any case, for the sake of the training video, all documents you insert into the master, known as sub-documents, so that's why I called them that. So let me go ahead and call this my master. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it master and hit enter. And you can see on the title bar, master. Now to insert other documents into my master that I can link to and also see the contents of those documents all within the master, come up here, click on the view tab, go to the views group, and let's go to outline. Now in the outline here, to be able to create subdocuments or insert other documents in here as subdocuments, you have to come over here to the master document group and say that you want to show document. Click on it. It expands it. So in the master document group, we can create subdocuments or insert them. Let's insert them first. Click on it. Opens it up and it says, okay, where's your subdocument? Well, there's Mr. Sub number one. Go ahead and double click and it inserts it. Let's scroll up so we can see the full breadth of it. It's the poem. There's no other way. And you can see it's within its box here as subdocument one. And when I scroll down, let's insert subdocument two. Now, when you insert additional subdocuments or you create them, you can't be in the box here for another subdocument because if you insert one or create it, well, it's going to be a mess. So let's go ahead and click on the outside next to that minus bullet here. And then come up and click on insert. And let's do number two. Double click. And there we go, scroll up, keep going until, hey, cool, so we have two different documents that we're linked to into the master, the poem and the cure all essential oils. Now they're linked to those documents on my desktop. How do you know? Well, if I make a change here, like instead of written by Kurt Kershaw, I do a pseudonym like, yo, what's up, KCK? And then I come up here and I click save, minimize this down to the taskbar, and then on my desktop in subdocument one, double click to open it up. I know you're thinking, hey, I thought you said that we can go ahead and have a link within the document that we can click on to open up the subdocument. Well, I'll show you that in just a minute, but right now I'm doing it this way. Let me go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and do I have the pseudonym? Hey, there we go, KCK. And what I do in one, vice versa, we'll update the other. So when the coworker is working on the poem and goes, hey, what's this KCK? Let me go ahead and save that and then close out. When I go back to my master, is it updated? Oh, it did. He updated it because they're linked. Now, if I want to convert them to links to be able to collapse them and focus on how many sub-documents I have and where they're at, well, you could go ahead and scroll and see how many you have by looking at the boxes. Well, it's a long way to scroll for that one box, then scroll down until you hit the second box and so on. In any case, to be able to convert them into links, so you can actually click on it and it'll open up that subdocument, just come up here, Master Document, click on Collapse. And automatically it collapses the text, converts it to a link. So if you want to go right to it, you can see when you hover over the link, it says in the pop up, hold down the control key and you get the finger, click on it, 
and it opens it up. Hey, welcome back. Isn't that nice? And then I can come in here and go, well, let's do way and then make any changes. Click save. When I close out, go back to the master. If I want to go ahead and expand it, way. Okay, that's not cool. So I can go ahead and override that and then save mine and it updates his. Now when you collapse them, as you can see the address, it's from the C drive, the users logged in as training on the desktop, subdocument one and the extension .dlcx. It tells the operating system what program to open up this file in. DLCX is for Microsoft Word. In any case, if you want to know more about extensions, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. And as far as the address goes, if somebody takes subdocument one and deletes it or puts it into another folder so it's not at this address on your desktop, well, when you control click on it, it'll give you the raspberries and say, oh, I can't find it. And if I can't find it, then you can go ahead and delete this and insert it as a subdocument again. Well, once you find out where it's at and get that new address. So it's pulled in and of course it'll be linked. Now, if I want to insert more subdocuments, well, make sure you're not within one. Go to the end here. And this time instead, let's go ahead and create one. Now, to create one, let me come up here and expand subdocuments because I can't create one with them collapsed. And so let me scroll down to, well, instead of scrolling down to the end, let's do Control End, as in E N D, the end key. So it takes me to the end. And then I can come up here and click on Create. And then it creates my subdocument. Of course, I'm on the outside of it. Let me go in it. Type in anything, and well, there you go. Did it create it? Well, let's go ahead and collapse to subdocuments. And it says, Do you want to save changes to the master? Okie dokie. And it's right there. And the name of the document is the first words that I typed in it. Well, the only words. Type in anything, and it's on the desktop. How do you know? Well, let's take it for a test drive. Hover over it, hold down the control key, get the finger, click. There it is. Type in anything. Oh, it really doesn't like that, doesn't it? In any case, you can go ahead and make your changes and say, this is a new document. Oh, it's got the heading right there. That's cool. Let's go ahead and click save, close out, go back to our master. And then to see the changes, instead of going back to the document with the control click, we can expand and then control end to go to the end and there you go new documents cool and then to get rid of them well you can do it expanded or collapse you just need to click on this little dude right here to select the entire sub document here in fact let's go ahead and collapse it and then do it again right here click on the dude it's a lot easier if you have to do multiple deletions instead of scrolling up and down if you got a lot of sub documents you can just go ahead and click on the tag right there hit the delete key and it's gone. Now it doesn't delete it from the computer, it just deletes it as a link in your master to the desktop. How do you know? Well, let me click save, minimize that down to the taskbar, type in anything, hey, it's right there. Didn't remove it, double click, and the contents are still there, cool. Let's close out, go back to the master, and then if you wanna be able to unlink your documents from the sub document, like this one right here, when you click in it, you can't unlink it unless you expand it, so expand them, and then click in the one that you want to break from, and then come up here, unlink it, and there you go. You no longer get the box, and when you collapse it, it converts it to a link because it's no longer linked. So any changes I make here, like no way, and I come up here and click save, that when I minimize that down to the taskbar because when I click on collapse, um, this doesn't collapse into a link, but when I scroll down, the other one does, expand and of course the other one expands because that one is linked to subdocument number two so let me minimize that down to the taskbar subdocument one double click and you see there's just way we're here it's totally way thanks for watching Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.